It's Friday, February 23rd, 2024. Welcome to episode 91 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, the City Council votes to fundamentally change the Open Government Commission. Meet the candidates and learn about the only statewide proposition on the primary ballot. Alameda Police Department addresses the issue of automotive sideshows. Bay Farm parents take steps to make schools safer. South Shore loses a tenant, and two big names are headed to the USS Hornet. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story, last week on episode 90, I discussed how the city council was examining the future of the Open Government Commission, the body responsible for oversight of the city's Sunshine Ordinance. As noted then, the council stripped the commission of enforcement powers four years ago, and currently the commission operates in an advisory capacity. On January 16th, Mayor Marilyn Ezzy Ashcraft and Councilmember Tracy Jensen directed staff to draft an amendment to the Alameda Municipal Code, transferring that function to city hearing officers, similar to the dispute resolution process for the rent control ordinance. The city attorney's office has a contractor pool of qualified hearing officers who would serve on a rotating basis as cases arise. Under the proposed setup, Sunshine Ordinance hearings, while open to the public, would not allow direct public comment. However, parties could submit witnesses and the hearing officer could admit relevant testimony and evidence. At their January 29th meeting, Open Government Commission members expressed general support for hearing officers, but also a strong wish that hearing officer rulings be binding rather than advisory. Paul Foreman of Alameda Citizens Task Force announced that ACT was withdrawing its initial support for the hearing officer format because they see a conflict of interest in the city attorney or any city officials choosing the hearing officers. Councilmember Malia Vela supported switching to the hearing officer format as proposed, saying she wants to see issues dealt with fairly and expediently. Mayor Ashcraft agreed, saying she was motivated by the length of time for past hearings and a, quote, painful to watch, end quote, process. Councilmember Tracy Jensen said she felt having the city attorney choose a pool of hearing officers at least reduced conflict of interest versus having the city attorney directly advise the Open Government Commission. Vice Mayor Tony Dasog disagreed, saying he sees strength in the commissioners coming from all walks of life and being community members. Councilmember Trish Herrera-Spencer objected to there not being a process for the public to comment directly and to the hearings not being at preset times. In the end, the motion passed 3-2, to two, with Dasog and Herrera-Spencer voting no. In other business, council also received a mid-year budget update. Overall, general fund revenue adjustments exceeded expense adjustments by $540,000, for non-general fund programs, an increase in revenues of $3.8 million, but additional expenses of $7.3 million, including pension stabilization, golf legal expenses, and pavement rehabilitation. City manager Jennifer Ott announced some upcoming free events, including a February 26th showing of It's Basic, a documentary about guaranteed basic income programs across the country, similar to Alameda's Rise Up pilot program. For a full look at the council meeting, including links to the mid-year budget update, see Karen Jensen's article at alamedapost.com news. California's primary, just a couple of weeks away on March 5th. As with every election, the Post is here to help you make an informed decision. You can find all of our election coverage at alamedapost.com election. Adam Gillett's been busy gathering profiles and positions of candidates. This week, you'll find information about State Assembly District 18, Mia Bonta currently holds that seat and is facing three challengers, Mindy Pechenuk, Cheyenne Kenny, and Andre Sanford. As with other local races, the Alameda Post sent each of the candidates three questions about their candidacy. What is the priority or focus of the campaign? Which unique skills and qualities would the candidate bring to the office? And what are the challenges and opportunities the candidate sees for the city of Alameda now and in the future? Only two responded, Assemblymember Bonta and returning challenger Pechenuk. In Adam's article, you'll find their answers as well as links to the other candidates' websites. Also at alamedapost.com slash election, a look at the nine candidates vying for the District 12 U.S. House of Representatives seat currently held by 12-time incumbent Barbara Lee. Lee is currently running to fill the Senate seat of the late Dianne Feinstein and as such is ineligible to run for her congressional seat. Again, the Post reached out to all candidates but only received responses from four. Republican candidate Stephen Slauson, and Democratic candidates Glenn Kaplan, Latifa Simon, and Dr. Jennifer Tran. For the remaining five candidates, we have provided links to their websites, as well as a link to a recent League of Women Voters virtual forum that included candidates who did not respond to the post. In keeping with California primary rules, the top two vote-getters, regardless of party, will advance to November's general election. 
There is only one statewide measure on the primary ballot, Proposition 1. Prop 1 serves a couple of purposes. It would require counties to invest 30 percent of their Mental Health Services Act tax dollars into housing programs and then spend half of that money on the chronically homeless and those living in encampments. Prop 1 also changes the name of the Mental Health Services Act to the Behavioral Health Services Act. Prop 1 also authorizes a $6.4 billion bond, of which approximately $4.4 billion would go toward building inpatient and residential treatment beds. The remainder would fund permanent supportive housing with half set aside for veterans with mental illness or addiction disorders. While the proposal has received support from major newspapers and the California Medical Association, it is not without its critics, including Disability Rights California and the League of Women Voters. You'll find a timeline of mental health initiatives that led to Proposition 1, as well as a link to a voter's guide examining the issue at alamedapost.com election. Back in episode 88, we covered the latest illegal automotive sideshow at Alameda Point. Last Thursday, the Alameda Chamber and Economic Alliance held a public event at Humble Sea Brewing Company, during which the increasing number of sideshows taking place at Alameda Point was addressed. Alameda Police Detective Lieutenant Eric Klaus spoke extensively about APD's intervention strategy as well as the difficulties involved with policing sideshows. Quote, From an intervention side, these types of activities are hard to predict for the most part. A lot of these events happen for a moment, then they get kicked out of that location and head to another location. They decide, hey, let's try the base. The word base itself gets people interested because it's a big open area. It's difficult for us to predict those types of fast-moving situations. End quote. Klaus further described the safety issues in dealing with sideshows and how police forces from Oakland, San Leandro, and Emeryville notify each other when a sideshow takes place or they see something on social media. He also noted that one issue for APD when it comes to sideshow intervention is the number of police officers available on a given day. For an in-depth look at Lieutenant Klaus's remarks, see Kelsey Gore's article at alamedapost.com news. On the subject of safety, parents of Bay Farm School students have taken steps to ensure that kids who ride their bikes to school can get there without incident. Led by Maria Piper of Bikewalk Alameda, volunteers set up cones and warning signs in the striped buffer between the vehicle travel lanes and the bike lanes. This helps keep cars from parking in the bike lane. Part of the problem is a mere 700 feet of curb space devoted to pick-up and drop-off. This leads to automobile overflow in the bike lanes. So far, the reception has been overwhelmingly positive, but there's still work that can be done. For more details and to get involved yourself, see Ken Durr's article at alamedapost.com news. A quick note in case you missed it, if you're listening on Friday, February 23rd, today is your last day to grab a bite at Panera. The South Shore facility is closing for good. If you're a fan of comic books and fantasy, you'll definitely want to take a look at this year's Carrier Con at the USS Hornet. The annual celebration of pop culture features cosplay, tabletop gaming, anime, and more. This year, they are welcoming two very special guests, Wendy and Richard Peeney, the creators behind the long-running graphic novel series Elf Quest. Details on the Hornet's website. The Alameda International Film Festival here for the weekend. Details at alamedapost.com slash features. Walking History Tour on Sunday, Dennis Evanoski and Adam Gillett examine the history of Park Street, explore the famous facades, and delve into whatever happened to the artesian waterworks. The tour starts and ends at the Alameda Museum, where you'll be treated to a special tour of that collection. Final chance to catch this particular tour is Sunday. For details and tickets, head to alamedapost.com slash tours. For background, to get you ready, see Dennis's article at alamedapost.com slash history. AlamedaPost.com slash events for a guide to what's going on in Alameda. Closing weekend for Kimberly Akimbo at Altarina Playhouse. Friday night, join the California Historical Radio Society for a discussion of how Silicon Valley traces its roots to ham radio, 6 p.m. at Central Avenue. Saturday, Farmer's Market from 9 until 1. This is also the weekend for tours of the Myers House and Gardens on Alameda Avenue. If you've never been, highly recommend it. On Sunday, the Village Kids Club at Ruby's on Lincoln has a family gathering celebrating Black History Month. More events at alamedapost.com slash events. To those of you who have given to support local news for Alameda, we say thank you. If you haven't given yet, why not? We're a 501c3 nonprofit, so your donations can be tax deductible. Be sure to check with your employer about matching donations. To give, head to alamedapost.com slash memberships. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, as well as our own subreddit. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple News. Find the Postcast wherever you get your podcast, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with episode 91 of the Alameda Postcast.